It's Tuesday, November 24th. Welcome aboard to this edition of Barnstable Today. I'm Kevin Friel. And I'm Len Gobiel. We'd like to remind you right at the top that the meetings we cover are available on demand at the town's website. You can find them at www.town.barnstable.ma.us. Kevin, what do you know about the tax classification system in the town of Barnstable? Well, the council heard just this past week from Jeff Rudziak, the director of assessing here in the town of Barnstable, on that tax classification system. And the council will vote very soon on this issue. Uh, before we get into what is uh, our annual review of uh, tax factor and choices and that type of thing, we need to inform you that uh, the tax factor hearing that you were planning to have on December 3rd cannot occur. Department of Revenue has been understaffed and cut like everybody else, and approximately 280 towns are still waiting in line to get review and certification from the Department of Revenue. There is no way in the world we're going to be able to get things done in time, which would also include public disclosure between when they finally certify us and that's required for you to be able to vote. Just to keep the cash flow going, we would do it in the normal procedure December 31st. It would be one quarter of last year's bill, just like the first two quarters were. And then we would proceed with a vote in January sometime after regular certification for the actual bill to be issued and due May 1st. So that's the status we find ourselves in through no fault of our own or any of the other towns in this scenario. So with that in mind, yes, ma'am. Um, so the consequence to the um, residents is that they will not see a bill uh, or they will not have to pay a bill until late January. No, the consequence is, consequence is the actual bill potentially cannot be issued on the 31st. So instead, they would get another quarter of last year's actual payments, just like they did for the first two quarters of this year. Mm -hmm. So it would be to keep the cash flow going to the town without the actual tax calculations generating the actual bill. And that would be issued in December and December due? December 31st as normal. And due? And that would be due once again January 31st or February 1st. So we're just extending last year's? Well, yes, ma'am. It would it would be the same due date as we would normally have. It mm -hmm. just wouldn't be based on actual tax. Okay. So I that's what you. we did three years ago when we found ourselves caught by DOR again. So this is a, a similar situation, but it doesn't hinder the cash flow of the town. It just leaves that fourth quarter to reflect all the changes in the tax situation for I the see. real parcels. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, what we have here for the presentation are actual numbers, nonetheless. All our uh, recertification work and all our evaluation changes have been submitted for over three weeks now, so all that data has been used to, to show you what's going to happen. And barring some extraordinary occurrence, these are the actual numbers you're going to be voting on or considering when you do decide whether you want to do an exemption, a split rate, or any other type of action. So given that, let's move on quick. Broad overview probably more for the individuals who may have not had such exposure to it uh, as the new council members, but uh, we have these terminologies that tell us how much we're able to levy, under what circumstances, um, what we can add back in and what we can consider new growth every year. I don't think we want to go into too much detail on that because this is, this is the same thing every year that we uh, need to do. Uh, but what we really come down to are the tax shifting options, uh, which are three basic options that the council has. You can split the rate, or in other words, classify the rate as it's called, which means move some of the burden to the commercial industrial personal property group, which we will uh, refer to as a CIP for convenience. You can also adopt a 20%, up to a 20% exemption on valuation on primary residence homes. Actually, there's an option 2A, which is to combine those two approaches, grant an exemption and also split the tax rate, which obviously complicates the, the um, rate calculation considerably, but is an option. And the third one is not one that needs to be up uh, every year, but we keep presenting it because it had been considered one time a 10% uh, ex exemption on small con commercial properties, which is related to businesses, actually. So we'll go over these uh, right after we get through some definitions. We all know the levy limit is how much the community can levy 
before you add anything else to it. And that's normally 2.5% of what we had the year before. For the folks at home, that means the counselors cannot decide to go over another 2.5% of budget money every year just because they feel like it. They're limited by law to how much we can add to the budget each year. So there, it, this is not a, uh, a choice that they're allowed to, any laxity in. Uh, but to that, they're also allowed to add debt exclusions, which cover things like schools, and we have a number of those still being paid down, or any capital outlay exclusions specifically. And we also add new growth to that number to arrive at a final levy limit that we are able to approach. The uh, new growth, as uh, uh, Mr. Mellon has mentioned a number of times, is down significantly. And as you might well guess, construction has been off quite a bit. Projects that were to be started are not started. Um, people who were, um, uh, people have wrapped up things that they were doing, but nothing new is, is happening. So we're seeing that revenue source shrink and it will, is expected to continue to shrink. Our uh, levy limit to start with was $86 million. That comes from last year. You had the 2.5%, 2 .2 which is $2.1 million. Bucks. I, we managed to get 618000 of new growth this year. Prior, last year was over $900,000. The year before was $1.2 million. So you can see where it's going. It's sliding down. But that gave us a new levy limit of eight, $89 million. The levy ceiling is nothing more than 2.5% of the total value of your community. So it says if for some reason you were able to access 2.5% of your total community value, that's what that number is, $335 million. It's not related in any fashion to money that's accessible. So once we add in the debt exclusion there, and then we have uh, money from the Cape Cod Commission, our maximum allowable levy this year is $91.8 million. So the options that you are going to talk about are going to be how to allocate that $91.8 million. Who's going to pay it? Here's the basic number that we're all interested in. Our actual total valuation in town dropped by about $1.1 billion this last year. That results with the slight increase, relatively slight increase, in the uh, tax levy to a tax rate now of $6.85 potentially. Barring anything unusual, that will be the single tax rate. Now, last year, that single tax rate was $6.12. So as you can probably surmise, that increase is directly related into the combination of an overall about 8% reduction in total town value along with the allowed 2.5% levy increase. So you got a little larger levy. you got a lot less value to split it among. You've got a significant uh, 73 cent increase in the tax rate. So I think I have actually said enough here to confuse myself. So <laughs> if there are any questions, I'd be, be happy to answer them at this point. Otherwise, uh, uh, feel free to contact me at the, in my office if there's any clarification you need. And I'll certainly keep you informed as to where we are proceeding as far as the uh, potential legislation and when we can actually vote. Kevin, any meetings coming up? For Tuesday, the 24th of November, we have the Waterways Committee meeting in the Selectman's Conference Room at 7 o'clock. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Barnstable Today. I'm Kevin Friel. And I'm Lynn Gobiel.